So let's look at it mathematically. A voltage, and this is for uh, the piezoelectric effect, piezoelectric, piezo, I know, piezo. A voltage difference can correlate to a pressure difference. Now, this is the voltage, this is S. S is the uh, sensitivity constant. Uh, it's a constant, I'll call it the sensitivity constant, because it sounds funny. And uh, the sensitivity, if you've got a slab of piezoelectric material, it's got a thickness H. The sensitivity is something called the uh, piezoelectric constant times the thickness. So that's, that's what goes into it. Um, they've got some, a table here of uh, piezoelectric constants and uh, quartz, uh, voltage per unit applied, pressure per unit thickness. Quartz is 0.055. Look at Rochelle salt, 0.098. Ammonium dihydrogen phosphate, 0.178. There are a lot of piezoelectric crystals that have much higher uh, piezoelectric constants than quartz, but quartz is just so darn cheap. It makes it worthwhile. Now, I can run it as a pressure transducer, but I'd also like to run it as an accelerometer. So let's take this equation. Voltage is the sensitivity times the pressure difference, and we know what the sensitivity is, how, it, how it's made. Now, for the accelerometer, let's see, pressure is force per area. And that's mass times the acceleration. That force is mass times acceleration over the area. For the, PI, for the accelerometer that I showed you, well, the sensitivity set, because we chose the thickness of the material, we chose the material itself. The mass is set. It's already preloaded in the accelerometer. And the area, that's the area that the piezoelectric, uh, piezoelectric crystal is sitting on, the size of it, that's already set. So all this in the accelerometer is a constant. So that's another constant, and it's proportional to the area. So we could say for accelerometers, the voltage is equal to the constant S of G. And I'm going to call S of G the G sensitivity, because that's even funnier. Okay, so it's the voltage change is directly proportional to the acceleration. It's a direct correlation. For example, let's say I've got this uh, accelerometer, and uh, I read, let's see, and it's got a G sensitivity of 12 millivolts per G, and G is, like I said, a unit of acceleration. And um, I get a reading, a voltage reading, of 20 millivolts. And I want to know what's the acceleration. Well, let's see, voltage is equal to G sensitivity times acceleration. So the acceleration is equal to the voltage measured divided by the G sensitivity. Will the units work out? Let's see, oh yeah. So we get 20 millivolts over 12 millivolts per G, which is equal to, let's see, millivolts cancel. That's going to be, uh, let's see, 10 five thirds, 1.67 Gs. So that's how you can take a, um, acceleration, uh, a pressure difference, and produce a voltage out of it. Another use of these is sonar. Um, with a sonar system, I can do two things. With active, with active sonar, let's see. I've got a crystal, and I run a voltage across it. And the voltage will cause uh, compression of the material. And the compression of the material will put out a pressure wave. So that's... Uh, that's voltage 
potential difference being converted into pressure. And that's, uh, that's active sonar. Now I can take crystals also, if they get a pressure pulse, they can convert it into an electrical signal. So if a pressure pulse comes at me, it's going to compress this and it's going to produce a voltage. So the pressure pulse produces a voltage and that's passive sonar. A typical, uh, typical sonar system will have an array of piezoelectric crystals in the hole, something like that, where they want to be sensitive. And, uh, and they'll have passive and active capabilities. It, that's all it is. For example, uh, you're under the water and there's a, you've got a submarine. This is a classified design, so don't pass this on. And it sends out a signal and it sees the uh, object is a uh, which is uh, the uh, Great Atlantic Stubby Shark. I don't know if you've heard of these, but uh, they're very rare, and so these uh, special s submarines go out and, and look for them, so they can document them and then hunt them and kill them. The um, let's see, I sent out a signal. Let's see the speed of sound in. Uh, Waters, I don't know, it's somewhere around like 1200 meters per second. The speed of sound in air is like 330. And uh, I send out a pulse, and I'll call it R for round trip. I send out a pulse, and I get a signal back uh, two seconds later. And I want to know uh, what's the distance to the shark, the stubby shark. Let's see, speed of sound is equal to, actually, it goes this distance. It goes out and it's got to come back, this, the signal. So it's twice the distance divided by the round trip time. And so the distance is equal to the speed of sound times the round trip time divided by two, which would be 1,200 meters per second times two seconds over two seconds cancel. That's going to be 1,200 meters away. Piezoelectric crystals are using all kinds of, oh, what is it, the grill lighters. If you want to light your grill, you got those long things, you click them. Uh, all you're doing is you're uh, creating spark of voltage difference by squeezing a piezoelectric crystal. They're ubiquitous. They're all over the place. That's piezoelectric crystals.